Kaifley. Um, she has been the representative for the Nature Conservancy for how many years? A, a long time. 23. 23 years. Um, and she helped bring the bird festival to what we know it is today. I'm sure she'll get, go into detail about that, but we are delighted to have her here. Also with us tonight are Jackson and Caroline Hill. Yes, they're related, father, daughter, don't. Uh, <laughs> you never know. Um, Jackson is an incredible photographer. I worked with him years ago. He's known for hanging out of uh, helicopters and taking pictures of building shots for big budget uh, projects. And uh, Caroline is his lovely daughter who also is an artist and has done some of these gorgeous paintings that you see. All of these things are for sale or commission or whatever, and the proceeds will go to Restore Grand Isle, which Jean can tell you more about that. So welcome, I'm so glad you were here. Um, Jean, do you want to, What do we want to do the video first? Okay, all right, we're gonna show you a video. <laughs> Oh, uh, we do, okay, we do have, uh, like I said, we have amazing monthly programs. We had a monthly program scheduled for April, which was actually gonna be uh, at the Holiday Inn. We were bringing in Tiffany Kirsten, who's a birder that won, um, saw the most number of species. She had a big year in 2020, and her talk was gonna be on elevating women birders. She's a very interesting young lady. Um, unfortunately, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and got three cancer, got three and had the hand. I got, I think it was actually okay. She got, she got removed and it did not go any further. But she is going to have to have some follow up treatment, which was going to cut into her, the healing was going to cut into her making the trip here. So we are going to try and get her back when she's ready and healthy, because we, I think it's better for you to see her in person. So if you'll send some good thoughts her way. So right now we don't have a speaker for April. We're hoping we will have one. Do we haven't heard back from, okay. So just be on the lookout. Maybe we'll have a speaker. If not, we might just have a little gathering of everybody and talk about birding. Um, anyway, stay tuned. All right. And this is put together by Jackson Hill.
All right, that was Jackson. It may the first time I saw it, I cried. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Is she good to go? Is it showing now? Okay. Okay. All right. Miss Landry. Happy to have you, ma'am. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Watch out for your that's a hole. Sure. Navigating this yep. is like navigating the trails on our preserve. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You never know. There are people on Zoom, and so they'll see you guys if we can just stay a little bit in front of it. You're good. Okay. Great. Sure thing. Just so I can. Okay. I'll try to remember. <laughs> Y'all have no idea how sharp my memory is. <laughs> <laughs> April 19th and the 20th of 2024 marks 26 years of the Grand Isle Migratory Bird Festival. And where is Kay? <laughs> Kay was my partner in crime. We met at a wetlands workshop that um, I was asked to attend on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce in our area, and it was a fast friendship. And after about three years of knowing one another, Kay says, we need an opportunity for all of the birders to come together for a little while so that they can find out what's going on with the sanctuary because through the Chamber of Commerce, we had put together a landowner, Mr. Grilletta, and the Nature Conservancy, and the first acquisition of, of our live oak Hagberry Forest was acquired by the Conservancy. And what a joyful day for me, because I have grandchildren that are ninth generation on Grand Isle, and they can we can go all the way back to the 1800s of their family, our family, playing in those woods. It was important to me to see it preserved. Well, Kay wanted to see a, a meeting of the birders, and I said, if you can get a speaker and you pull it together, I'll get the people to do the cooking. I'm a better cook than I am a birder, I can tell you. <laughs> but we did it. And that started out in my backyard. And for three years, it grew from about 80 plus people to the third year, it was over 320 people that we were feeding shrimp spaghetti and salad and bread pudding. It has and and it grew when it when it outgrew my backyard we moved it into a the community development team which was an a nonprofit entity there on Grand Isle and they took it over along with the help of the Nature Conservancy Veritaria uh, National Estuary and a lot of you all from the different bird clubs and it's still going strong. Uh, it's a day and a half of boat rides to Queen Bess Island. It's uh, guided tours by people that they may not be the professional guides, but they're some darn good guides. And it's always, it's always fun. This year, within 10 days of posting that the, that we were open for uh, reservations, uh, for participants in the tours, just the boat rides to Queen Bess Island were booked totally. I have a list as long as my arm and one leg of people that want to be on a waiting list, and I haven't had anyone uh, drop out. Maybe on that, that first day, uh, someone won't be able to make it. But it's it's been a huge success. The birds have started coming into Grand Isle. The town is recovering, and it's 
it's absolutely uh, terrific to see home almost normal again. So I, I'm going, I want you to see, that I'm not a technology person. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. There you go. Thanks. These birds have already started coming in. Uh, three weeks ago, uh, I was with a friend out in the woods. I don't know how many of you know Ricky Izon from Thibodeau. Mm -hmm. Great birder, great photographer. And uh, Ricky and I were doing some volunteer work uh, out there in the woods. And uh, he said, look, and there was a female painted bunting. And as we began to just, you know, working quietly, we were seeing more and more birds. Um, a couple of days ago, when the weather changed uh, instantly on us, uh, the next yesterday morning, uh, the trees in my yard were just full of birds. Please don't ask me to identify them. <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I can listen. I can. I can organize, and I can work, and I know some of the. You know the. Some birds are real familiar to me just because they're. I know what a painted bunting is because he's so beautiful. So, uh, but I do my best to welcome the people, and to let you know to answer your questions about what's happening, in the woods. I'd like to share with you that just about three weeks ago, uh, we had a donor from Houston who has a, a camp on Grand Isle called me and said, um, could you use some bird feeders? And I said, well, sure. He says, well, I'm gonna come down and I'm going to put in some feeders. He brought a worker with him. They installed eight feeders and a week later, he comes back and he installed some hummingbird feeders. But we have some suet feeders, and then we have the the big feeders that hold the seeds and the fruit in them. And um, I can tell you, the first week that they were up, the the grackles and the red winged blackbirds they they were as big as chickens after that. <laughs> so. We've had a lot of improvements. Uh, we've had um, the golf core uh, workers who the majority of them are housed here in Baton Rouge, but they travel all over the state doing good work for the Nature Conservancy, Wildlife and Fisheries, and uh, other nonprofits, always good outside work and uh, cleaning for us. They helped us um, clean up the cox fields. They helped us uh, take out, I would say conservatively a thousand tallow trees. And uh, we had them for two and a half weeks in a row. And, and uh, they're there this week, they left today. They'll be back uh, right after Easter. So Grand Isle's looking good in the forest and the rest of the island, um, if I can, I can do this for you. Uh, there is a mistake here on the um, on the activities because uh, we're not doing the kayak tours. We had some problems getting uh, leaders for that, and we hope to rectify that and offer the kayak tours again um, in a year or so. But as of right now, um, Ida robbed us of so many people whether they were camp owners or islanders and um, someone to lead the kayak tours is someone that left and has not come back due to no camp so the town of grand isle um, and i forgot to bring y'all some of those maps the town of grand isle produced this map for us um, that shows the trails. And I, I think that that's a boon for everyone so that you know exactly where you're headed and you know that this yard, if it doesn't have a, a sign in it that says birders friendly or birders welcome, 
then you you have a uh, you might have a problem there. So um, the map is working out really well. I saw my first black and white warbler this past week. For this year, it was exciting. And anytime you want to see a um, black neck still, just go down to the Air Missile Ponds. I think that they're, they've laid claim to that area. And then we get to the Restore Grand Isle. Ronnie should have been here. <laughs> He's boss of the Restore Grand Isle. He works tirelessly for the grand sum of, and and he's at it seven days a week. I, he takes off to go to, uh, an, an hour to go to church, and the rest of the time he's thinking, restore Grand Isle. He, there there are some great programs that they work. There are the the life rings and um, the postings on the on the beach that. If someone gets caught in a riptide, there is a um, there are a life vest, there are life rings to help the the folks. He works with the environment, with um, planting trees, with um, a community garden, and just helping people. If you have things in your yard that that you can't manage. He can come, he has a tractor through the garden club and he can help you with those things. And it's not just the, the homeowner that lives there like, like myself and a few others, it's everyone. It's the camp owners and it's the local residents. It's a real community effort. He's also worked on the um, helping to get the crossovers on the beach repaired and uh, doing that kind of work. And he has a website that you can go on and see all of the programs that are going on. You can volunteer or you can donate or you can just leave him a note that says you really appreciate what that organization is doing. So I'm open for questions now. That we showed earlier. Yes. I, I do believe it is, yes. And I may have some in my car and I'll be happy to go get them uh, a little later and pass them out. I just didn't think to get a bundle before I left home. Uh, this morning at my house was kind of like crazy. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's tourist um, information hours are the same as the town hall. Opens at 8, closes at 3.30. And uh, everything you need is right there when you walk in to the front door. Louise is our tourist director, and her, her desk is right there. Monday through Friday, I'm sorry. Yeah. When we become more prosperous, maybe we'll have somebody on Saturday. <laughs> because it is needed. We need that. I would love to see us uh, have a high school student working that kind of, maybe two of them on a Saturday, uh, doing that kind of work. Because it's an, a great opportunity to learn the history, to get easy with the public, and be able to... Uh, help people and learn who you are, why you think the way you think. You know, I tell my children all the time, if you don't know who your ancestors are and, and how they got here and why they've stayed, then you don't know which direction you're going to go in. So, and, and I truly believe that for, it goes for all of us, no matter where we're from. Yes. How, how are the businesses there now since the hurricane? I mean, because you kind of they started slowly <laughs> opening restaurants and there's everything right. Up in, and up for in those of you that haven't been to Grand Isle, <laughs> Yums is now a bar and grill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I keep, I do business through the through the window. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Food is still great, 
And um, I, I keep hearing all of these drinks that have these local names and, and I, I get good reports. Yes, sir. No, it's her daughter, uh, Kelly, that's running it. Leota helps her. And uh, I see Leota in the back uh, by the little work area. She's usually peeling shrimp because uh, one of the things that I admire about Kelly is she truly believes in do business locally and what you eat, if she can get it fresh from Grand Isle, it that's where it comes from. And uh, all of her shrimp that she serves are local, not frozen. Uh -huh. Yes. I'm going to page back to the map because oh, somebody sure. was asking on sure if they could take a picture of it. There you go. But it, it's the, the map has been wonderful, just even for the locals, because uh, we lost a lot of landmarks. You know, that little greenhouse that used to sit on the corner, as the song says, it ain't there no more. <laughs> So it's good to have this this new map. Yes. The pier isn't open. It's going to be another year and a half. But there is the 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 um, the eastern bathhouse closest to Barataria Pass. That one's open, and the they're going to start work on the tower. Um, towards the end of this summer. They're starting to work on the on the fishing pier. They're having to take out a lot of uh, structure so that they can start over. But the campground is open and there is uh, some wilderness camping on the beach. So uh, they're ready for business and it's good to see it go in that way. And the birding is good over there right now. Yeah. I'm sorry, will the what be? Oh. Birding trails are always open. There, the, yeah, I was going to say the birding trails are always open. Uh, there are a lot of camps that are for rent, and the motels are uh, those that we have left are open. Oh, for the birding signs, the bir birders welcome. We lost some of those houses, <clears throat> but uh, those folks will have signs in their yards when you're walking all of the the, the lanes. Those that are uh, ready for visitors, they'll have a sign in their yard. By by what? Oh, April 8th. Oh, before the festival. I'm sorry, my hearing's not good. <laughs> I've been, <laughs> I have a birthday coming up. <laughs> and I'm a whole lot closer to 80 than I am to 70 now. <laughs> I think you're doing great. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, yes. It was it was given to us, and then a decision was made to sell it. And I cried. Okay. But I have to say that the the new owners they have made a beautiful camp out of it. It that. It's just beautiful. It was beautiful to, it was beautiful to me. Uh, our, and, you know, I think some days we truly regret that that was sold because it was such an asset to having groups come in and visit with us and do research. And then um, for some of our employees to be able to come to the beach and, and spend a weekend, it was, uh, I miss it, yes. And it makes it difficult when I have like the festival coming up. I have to rent 
a place for the for the birding gods to stay. I didn't know it was that expensive. <laughs> but since Ida, it's even more expensive. But we're lucky to have it, you know. And uh, I'm a good beggar. I always beg for a discount. They give me a, you know, <laughs> it's better than no discount. Thank you. Uh, yes, I I miss those days. Yeah, I truly do. I would like also to let you know that Saturday this of this week, we're going to do an iris walk. Over the last four years, we have uh, joined in with Gary Salaf and his uh, the Louisiana Iris Initiative. And over the last four years, we've planted something like close to 3,000 rhizomes and plants and put them in the ground. And we did our first walk last year, and it was wonderful. We had at least 1,500 blooms. And this year, it'll be uh, even bigger because we've planted more. And the ones that were first planted four years ago, they've grown. So we will have a uh, an iris walk on the Grilletta track on uh, at 10 o'clock on uh, March 30th, this coming Saturday, and then uh, on April 6th, the following Saturday, we'll have another uh, walk uh, through that area and a little history. You know, I I like telling the stories of Grand Isle. I try not to make it gossip. <laughs> but you know <laughs> so I, I, and I think that that's about all that, that that I have going on right now the the bird festival is the top priority on my list for the past couple of months and as we get closer uh, that's all I do is eat and sleep bird fest until it's finished but I I once again, I want to say thank you to Kay and to Dennis, because I can assure you that if it were not for them, Dennis always being there to, to help with school, to help guide a tour, and Kay to do all the organizing of it. And let me tell you, I had to really learn to appreciate what she was doing. But it's uh, it's it's been a thrill for all these years. Thank you. That's good. Thanks. All right. I'd like to have um, Jackson and Caroline, if you could come up and tell a little bit about the art and the Restore Grand Isle fundraising initiative. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Sure. Yes. Okay. okay, we're not official with RestoreGrandIsle.com, but we've been working to help raise money. Um, the organization brought Caroline to Grand Isle to produce the poster and the iris print and these door hangers, Restore Grand Isle. She did that pro bono as a, um, a project for Restore Grand Isle, and I think we have raised about ten thousand dollars off that particular wow. project wow. for and Grand Isle. Here tonight. <laughs> yes, and yeah, and the, and the poster and the door hanger and the iris sprint all go. All the money is directly to uh, Restore Grand Isle. It is RestoreGrandIsle.com, and there's a whole lot of information on there because there's some big projects, including uh -huh. the restoration of the Oleander Hotel, which would be a huge boom to Grand Isle if that could happen. Um, me, I, I, I used to do a lot of shooting professionally in Grand Isle for the mayor, for different companies, but I retired about four years ago and now I just go down there and shoot for these organizations just for the heck of it because I get whiskey and fish. <laughs> and so that works out great. <laughs> and all shit, yeah. So, yeah. And, and Caroline, so I'm Caroline, uh, this is my pop, and uh, 
he kind of said what I was going to say, but uh, <laughs> I, I uh, am a painter in New Orleans. Uh, me and my dad and my mom used to go birding all the time uh, when I was young and even now still. And uh, it's very, very special to me. So uh, I paint all kinds of different things, series work, but I almost always go back to nature uh, at least once a year with a piece or two. But uh, birds are my absolute favorite thing. And um, we have a lot of different types of work over here. This was the piece for the door hanger that I just finished it off. But uh, if y'all have any questions, there's, he. this is all his section here. It's all uh, birds specifically from Grand Isle. Mine is just, I brought anything with a bird on it because I thought <laughs> y'all would be appreciative <laughs> of that and there was plenty around. So um, I'm fun of just making sure okay. that they get it on. Uh, but if y'all have any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer it. But yeah, Restore Grand Isle. And Grand Isle is uh, just such a special place. And um, if you are able to contribute, it'd be great because uh, there's birds that they get that nowhere else does. I mean, they just drop out of the sky down there. And you see hooded warblers just like on the sidewalk and they just walk with you. It's the weirdest thing. I mean, it's it's really so special. So um, I hope y'all can do the festival. And if not, uh, get down there when you can because uh, they could use the visitors. But yeah. All different birds that can be painted. Which one do you think that's painted the most? In the world or in Louisiana? In the United States. In the United States. My guess would be a cardinal, but that's 100% a guess. <laughs> I have no scientific evidence on that. Why do you ask? Yeah. Yeah. Really? So now I'm trying to see Okay. Are you saying you wanted to paint right blue there? You wanted to paint right so, oh well, you can. <laughs> we'll talk after. Yeah. <laughs> no, just... Yeah. Lot. If y'all have any questions over here, it's too much. All right. So okay. So who's going to the bird festival? Oh yeah. Good deal. Well, do y'all have any other questions for? Yes. Um, so it's mainly pieces, uh, sure way. Yes, the plant, the potato, the potato. Uh, I don't know. Jean, still me? Jean. Gee, <laughs> how's how's the how's the war going on in the potato vine? I think it was in the Sherway Woods and that war is a lot of Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I can say that uh, we did learn a, a few lessons. You know, in the beginning, we were spraying them. And then we were killing the understory. So we stopped that. Yeah. And understory is coming back with the Yokon and the um, Tuesday tree and oh, good. the others. But then we were still having this problem. And what we found is, is we haven't eradicated them, but we, we started pulling the vines and we cut them. Oh. Before they made the potatoes, before okay. they start the bloom, and then they die. Okay. You know, by the time we get in there, uh, the end of July or the beginning of uh, of August, they haven't they haven't bloomed and they haven't set the potatoes on the vine. Yeah. So, they procreate so, by the fruit. Right? Pardon. They procreate by the fruit. They don't spread. by the fruit, correct. But they will send runners out under the ground once the it's established with a root system, and they'll come up the next year. So we're pulling the we're pulling the vine, and we're out of the trees as best we can, and we're cutting them uh, about a foot to two feet off the ground, and that helps tremendously. 
we're seeing fewer of those bonds that have a dinner size plate mm -hmm. um, leaf climbing to the top and shading the trees. So um, we're fighting it. It's, it's um, all that job yeah. <laughs> so do you have uh, restoration or uh, projects that people could come and volunteer if they come from out of town to help with or is there That's a schedule the, okay the vine pulling and the, the potato harvest okay uh, it sounds I funny to have a potato <laughs> harvest in Grand Isle <laughs> We pretend that they're Easter eggs. Yeah. <laughs> well, they didn't enter at all. Pardon? Well, they didn't enter at all. You know? I feel like crazy. We have a couple yeah. of people. We have a couple of people on the island that raise pigs. So I asked, can you mind if I bring some potatoes over to see if the pigs will eat them? And they won't. Oh. <laughs> of course. Yeah. 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 Them either. So they have no natural enemy. They're That's just the good for enemy. reef restoration. I don't know. <laughs> just put them along the reef. <laughs> I, I can tell you, I boiled one of those potatoes, sliced <laughs> it, and deep fried it. And even deep frying didn't have food. <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty bad. <laughs> but no, they're not edible. Yeah. They're using an animal on the that will eat them. <laughs> but the, the, air, the air potato leaf eating beetle oh. does work. Okay. It's just that we can't get enough of them. Yeah. <laughs> No, we, the birds eating, probably uh, eat them. <laughs> and Dr. Uh, Rodrigo uh, Piaz, we, re we have released right at 5,000 beetles over the last four years. Wow. And, you know, the town sprays from mosquitoes. They frown upon uh, someone like me coming in and asking, would you stop spraying in the woods? Right. Right. Because there are camp owners around yeah. there, you know, homeowners, right. I should say, because uh, you have a lot of the Grand Isle people that are, that's where they, they live, is in that tree area. Mm -hmm. So then if you look at um, that, you don't want to, uh, you don't want them, you don't want the population to suffer, but then <coughs> the pesticide kills the bees. Right. And then the salt in the soil doesn't seem to agree with them so well. Because the beetle goes uh, underground to lay its eggs, the larva hatch, and when they start feeding there and coming out, <coughs> it's um, the, the salt is not good for them. Mm. So we're, we're still battling it. And we know they're working because you'll see the, the leaves that are, um, they look like filigree. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, that's pretty, mm -hmm. but um, it's it's just not enough. But with with the beetles, with harvesting the potatoes and killing the vines, uh, another ten years, I think it'll take before we feel like we have them under control because we've been battling them since two years after the cream. Wow. And that's wow. Now. Yeah. <laughs> but we're just going to keep on doing it and, you know, trying to stay ahead, just like they're doing uh, all across the southern United States. Florida is, you know, having the same battle as Louisiana. Yeah. So. And with other stuff, too. Yeah. Do you all have any other questions for Jean? Yep. You're good. You're you're a plant. We did so oh my god, You get one glimpse of it and it's oh my god, it is so beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. No matter the bird that comes and spends the winter with us, you know, that occasional bird that gets blown off track and we get excited about them you know like the the red legged honey, honey creeper, creeper. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I saw it and I could understand it. Sorry. Yeah. But no bird gets the attention and the um, the joy gives the joy better than um, a painted bunting. Mm -hmm. it, it's like a box of so so I've been talking to Caroline. I don't I don't know if you all are familiar with the the mural project that was in Manhattan in New York City, the New York New York Audubon Society. A certain section in Manhattan, Washington Heights, which is actually where John James Audubon is buried, I found out later. Um, there's a section then they have about 20 or 30 businesses that have painted murals on of birds on the outside of their bodega, you know, when they pull the, the garage door down or whatever. And some of them are on the outside of buildings. They're spectacular. And there's actually a scavenger hunt that you could look up online and go find all these gorgeous murals. I did that, my son lived there, so it was really easy for me to do. So I'm thinking Grand Isle needs a mural, murals on the sides of some of the buildings, like on their the restaurant or the, the the multiplex is really homely looking and I think it needs something. So I've talked to Caroline and she's all ready to go. And so I've had calls into New York Audubon to find out, okay, how did you go? How did you do this? How did you, did you get a sponsor? Did you get, um, so what we need to do, are we, I'm trying to get organized. I'd like to go to Grand Isle and find a business owner or two that may not mind having a really pretty painted bunting painted on the side of their business. Or um, Caroline was saying she'd like to paint the red-legged honey creeper because it's a historical bird and it's a really pretty bird. And then it'd be like, on this date in 2023, there was a red-legged honey creeper seen. <laughs> just, you know, anyway, so just throwing that out there if anybody else thinks that's cool. I think it's a cool idea, yeah. so. Um, but it's real beachy, I mean, colorful, and it would start promoting more things about birds. We all know people go there to fish, nothing wrong with that. I love to eat it. <laughs> but um, anyway, it would be it'd be cool. And if you get a chance and you want to look online at the New York Mural Project, I would highly recommend it. You'll see that it's just spectacular, some of the things that the artist done. And no different from what Caroline can do. She was a New York artist for a while. She's got it. She can do it. <laughs> I think the owner, um, Youngs. Youngs, uh, okay. And the owner of Yeah. Oh, yeah. Youngs and who? Hurricane. And her, her, okay, Hurricane Hole. And All right. Well, you know. A sure way just recently is finishing up where the barbecue place used to be on the yeah. side, the subway. Okay. Well, that's going to be the White House. They've never opened uh, where they were down Chickasola Lane. Okay. Because they've been waiting for this renovation of the building on the beach that uh, Shelly Schumbaugh owns. Okay. And that's where they're moving into. The end of April, I believe, it was in the red. But they painted uh, different sections because there's a real estate agent in yeah. there. There's been yeah. a, uh, a boutique, and then you have the restaurant. It's all different colors, mm -hmm. and it's like, like a canvas. Yeah, it yeah, be, yeah. You know, just well, we need to have a powwow because <laughs> she's ready. And I've been ready. And I just think if we start putting some pretty birds on some of the buildings, it would just be beautiful. And we've, some paint. we've got, some paint. Uh, well, she, well, we have, we have to get permission. <laughs> I think the thing is, is just, you know, would they be accepting of it? I, the biggest thing I've been trying to get information back from New York to just to find out what's the protocol what's the template how did they do it as far i mean you have to rate it costs money she's she's got to be able to have supplies and place to stay and all that but you know what the template is and if you have people that sponsor these mural anyway i'm trying to get the deets on that and i have not succeeded in doing that yet but also just to get the idea across to some of these business owners is that something that they you know, just because I come in, I'm from Baton Rouge. Oh, you need to do this. It hits a New York. They're going to go. Oh, I, don't, mm, 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 mm. I mean, that's Grand Isle. I'm. That's their own little 
group. So, but I'd like to talk them into it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever, any, any of any of those that you mentioned, if they that would be something that they would would entertain. I mean, maybe they hate birds. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think it's a. I think it's according to um, what are the interests of the majority of their their Pe um, customers. Right, right. You know, and I think if you do one, so they see what it looks like. Yeah. Then you got you can have buy-in because I mean then it'd be like, well, what is this? What's this going to look like? So the fact that you've already done some great things for Grand Isle, I mean, great blue heron. With a trout in its feet. Yeah. <laughs> or a pelican. <laughs> yeah, Bruce. Oh, first of all, have you considered a sign when you drive down to the island where you said the back of the home of the bird festival? So I'm asking with the popularity of it now. Oh, have y'all ever considered, I know man, the issue expanding the number of days or maybe the two weekends for people or anything like that? When, when the community development committee first took over the bird festival, we had about between 28 and 30 families members. So we had a good work for us. Now we're down to about 12 mm. people. And uh, I think the youngest is in her early 60s. Oh. <laughs> and the rest of us are At this point, it's manpower. <laughs> the families that are native to Grand Isle. A lot of those families have moved. Then you look at um, the families that are there, it takes mom and dad both working mm -hmm. in order to pay the rent mm -hmm. or the house note and the insurance. It is um, it's tough. rebuilding and having insurance. And and I don't want to be a, a you know, Debbie Bam. I don't want to be negative, but the fact is, is that our young people uh, can't afford to live on Grand Dog because we don't have those kind of jobs that we once had because the oil and gas industry is, you know, it's left us. The boat industry has mm -hmm. left us. We still have some, but it's most of the people that are working in those capacities, they're... They live elsewhere. There was a big wide open space. Yep. Yep. And it, it's hard. I ask all the time, you know, what are we going to do for a workforce to accommodate the businesses that are tourism oriented? Who's going to cook that hamburger? Right. And how much is that hamburger going to cost you? Because the waitress can't live on just what a waitress makes. Right. And a cook in the restaurant mm -hmm. can't make it. Right. From their family. Yeah. Because Brad Lowe, the Coast Guard, is the home. The Coast Guard? They did. And uh, if the Coast Guard, they've come back to a point. They they took the main building where the offices and the and the uh, mess hall were. There is a bank of uh, apartments, like studio apartments, for the enlisted men and women that don't have families. As of right now, the majority of those people that are stationed at Grand Isle are living on the boats mm -hmm. that are there. Mm -hmm. the, fam the family housing that we have, which is about I guess it's about 20, maybe 24 uh, duplexes. You know, that makes up the housing. It must be 12 or 14 buildings that are duplexes. And those um, Coast Guard, in the beginning, after Ida said, 
they weren't going to renovate them and make them livable. But they have since changed their minds about that, and there is work beginning on it. But you know, the the mayor uh, is working so hard to get uh, affordable housing for Brandon. Mm -hmm. I know this is a no, it's neat. But I mean, it's if, interesting. It is know. because when we go there and and spend a weekend or two there, and we want to go have a meal, and we go, boy, that's kind of pricey for a hamburger. It's like just pay it because it's what you've said. We have to be able to sustain us going there for fun, you know? <laughs> yeah. They are our teammates. Yeah. Should be able to earn a living that they can afford a rent or a car right. and a car that will get them off the island in an emergency. Mm -hmm. And they should be able to have 1.2 kids. Right. I mean, that's not and personal opinion here. I agree. But and that's what it But you know, you. what's going on in Grand Isle is very similar to what's going on at different resorts around the country. If you go to a ski resort or summer, finding the people who can live near that resort to help make your bed and clean your you know, toilets, it's the exactly. same problem. They're having problems all over. Exactly. They That's are. That's why you're seeing uh, some people, like, like Shirley, for instance, uh, over the last uh, 20 years, they had bought uh, buildings that they could convert to housing for their employees so that the, they could have steady mm -hmm. employees that show up every day. Right. And the restaurants are beginning to understand that and see it also mm -hmm. because what they're paying the cooks and what a, a waitress makes. Uh, gasoline's too expensive to have to drive from Galliana or Golden Meadow mm -hmm. to Grand Isle to work mm -hmm. um, a seven or eight hour shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. Um, I I am confident that we will find the answers and they yeah. will be great. Well, meanwhile, the birds are coming. That's it. <laughs> the birds are, or they're here. They're here, and they're more coming. And so we need to go look at them, <laughs> and support support these great great people who are. So I hope that people all come and join us at Grand Isle for the Migratory Bird Festival. Thank you. I had my back to it all earlier. First of all, the artwork of the Jackson is just beautiful. Yes. And I have a son with an art degree, and he has a front of business because he couldn't make it at all. <laughs> but uh, we have what, four of our posters, Taylor, four. And the artist of those donated her time and her talent, and that was uh, Donna Dittman. Mm -hmm. And she did that for about 15 years. And then I wanted you to, to say something about these. Yeah. That was carved by uh, Mr. Perez Perez. So these, these were the plaques that were given to the houses who agreed to let the birders come in their yard. They could come to my yard if I can get one of these. <laughs> and so many of those people have been relocated. There's yeah, no yeah. You know, it's so Mother Nature has played a trick on us several times. Mm -hmm. so, but Donna and uh, always did a, a beautiful poster for us. Mm -hmm. And we're so lucky to still have a collection of them Yeah. Around. And, yeah. and then uh, he, working with the, uh, the Ismaños from uh, St. Bernard Parish mm -hmm. for me was uh, such an eye opener and such gracious uh, people that have kept their culture here alive. And my first experience with them was when Grand Isle and Viola Rouge did. Uh, we decided that we needed to commemorate the storm of 1893 when it turned 100 years old. Wow. And we went to uh, St. Bernard Parish and did a call out for pictures. 
and then we did it on Lyle LaBouche and Carroll Parish and then Jefferson Parish so that we could collect pictures of old. Mm -hmm. And we had pictures from the 1840s to the 1940s. And it, it was terrific. That was my first experience with the Islanos. And then thanks to Kay, we kind of kept that going because of her connection with the artist and uh, having the, the bird fly. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So well, thank y'all. I enjoyed this. But oh, we enjoyed it. <laughs> And I'll like sell them up. Yeah, you do a good job. You do a great job. Thank you so much. We turn, is this on still?